What's up everybody? In today's video, we will show you how to create vegetation animation using shader graph, which can be represented something like wind simulation that moves the grasses or flowers or vegetation or flags in your level. If this is the first time you are watching us, I'm Ramis Altaba, the co-founder of Binary Lunar, so let's get started. Create a new Unity 2D project, then go to the package manager and install the universal rendering pipeline, universal RP. I already installed this, as you can see. So once you installed it, right click, create rendering, universal pipeline, pipeline asset, forward renderer, and rename it to something like 2D renderer. Then set that as a default value in the project settings in both graphics and the quality tabs. Then bring some sprites to your project, something like trees, flowers, or any grass or leaves, so you can start the shader graph on it. For me, I found a vector art which contains all those sprites I used. Actually, it was vector art, so I went to the illustrator and then exported all of those as PNGs. I provided the link to download these arts if you want to use them in the description below. So just drag any sprite to your scene, then create shader, 2D renderer, sprite unlit graph to create our shader graph. Let's start by the main texture which represents our sprite, so create a new property to the texture and name it main texture and of course you should set the reference to underscore main text so it auto detects your sprite then set the default texture to any of the sprites so we can see the process of the shader graph then drag that property to our shader graph then create a node sample texture 2d and link that texture to it then link the sample texture 2D to the color in the master node. Then we will use gradient noise to control the position of the vertices of our sprite. Then we need to scroll that gradient noise over time, so we need to create time node, and then we create a property called wind speed. It's vector one. We multiply those together of course, set a clear reference to the wind speed because we will use that encoding later to control the wind speed. Then we need to control the direction of the wall, so we create vector2 property and we name it wind direction. We multiply that with the result we got, so we can control the wind direction. Let's set the default value for the wind direction to 1 on the X for now to scroll the gradient noise to the left. To do that we need a tiling and offset node, then we link it to the UV of the gradient noise. Also we can control the scale of the wind by creating a vector1 property, name it wind scale, and connect that to the scale of the gradient noise. Set the default value for 1 for now. And we need that gradient noise to be affected by the UV of our vertices of the sprite. So we create position node and we set the position to get the absolute world position. You can use the world position but it's better and safer to use the absolute world because you know the position can have negative or positive values so to prevent any issues it's better to use the absolute word uh, absolute word position then we split the position using the split node to get the r and g only which represent the x and y because if you controlled everything you will control also the z value which, which is the rgb the b value and that will cause the 2D sprite to move in the Z axis, which is not nice. Link that to the UV on the tiling and offset node. Now we have the position of the noise ready to be added to the sprite vertices position. So we create a position node using the world absolute position and we add that to the position of the noise created. 
Then we apply that to the transform of the sprite by linking them to the transform node and we change the mode to transform from the world to object. And finally we link that to the vertex position on the master node. We can see now that our leaf is moving but it needs some adjustments before we reach a satisfying result. To apply that shader to our sprite, let's create a new material, name it Wind1, because we will create many alternatives to the wind effect. Then drag that shader graph onto the material, then drag the material onto our sprite. As you can see now, the leaf is moving, but the result is not satisfying yet. So let's go back to our shader graph and adjust some values. After experimenting a bit, I found that deducting 0.5 from the noise will make the noise clearer on the sprite so let's add an add node then deduct 0.5 from the x also we need a way to control the trends of the wind so uh, let's create a property wind trends and as a vector 1 and set the default value to 0.1 then multiply that with the final results we got. Then we need to split the values to get only the X and Y changes, otherwise the leaf will be moving also on, into the Z axis, which is not nice. So sp create split node, then get vector 2, link the X and Y to it, then add it to the position of the vertices. Now we got nice effect of the wind on the sprite. It feels much better than before and uh, nearly realistic if you got the correct parameters to your sprite. But as you can see, there is one issue now that the bottom side of the sprite moving the same as at the top, but we want only the top side to move while keeping the bottom side steady. So to do that, let's go back to the shader graph the idea here is to create a mask to cover the effect so we only affect the vertices on the top and we eliminate that effect gradually at the end at the bottom so let's access the uv by creating uv node and then split it to access only the y value which represented by the b in colors then we get the absolute value because the masks usually ranges between 0 and 1. 1 represents full white and 0 represents full black. In the white area the effect will be fully effective 100%. At the black area there will be no effect and eliminated. To control the wind influence mask let's create a property vector 1 and set the default value to 1 then power that with the results we got. To keep things safe and to avoid ruining our sprite, let's clamp the values between 0 and 1, because any value below 0 or above 1 can ruin our sprite. Finally, let's multiply that with the results before splitting the values here. Let's save and see what we got. As you can see now the leaf is steady from the bottom but it's moving from the top and we control the, the influence of that mask by changing the value of the wind influence mask. We reached a satisfying result for the wind effect but if you want to apply this to another sprite you will notice that they will be moving in the same pattern and exactly the same way which is not realistic in some cases so we need to create several instances of the wind to allow variations in its effect so let's create a new material then apply the same shader graph to it adjust the values from the other sprite and you will see now each leaf now moves in a different way which make them more realistic now you can repeat the process, create many variances of the wind effect, apply them to different sprites to have nice scene.
Now we can create a, a wind controller to control the wind speed on all our materials. So we can place that on the main camera. Let's create a new script, wind controller. And for that, we need only a list of materials and a float wind speed to control the wind speed. And in update, we say for each material in our materials list, we set the float underscore wind speed. Make sure that it's the same way written in your shader graph. And we set it to the wind speed float. Now in the inspector, you can drag all your materials to the materials list. And if you click play, and change the wind speed. Now it will change all the wind speed in all the materials in the scene. And that's how you can control the wind speed in your level. And that's what I kept doing till I reached this nice vegetation scene with wind represented by particle system. And I enabled on that the trails. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and thanks for our patrons on Patreon, Benjamin Benji, Craig Anderson, Jack Crystal, Kojo Oponi, Mohamed Aiden, Rick Jakubowski, and Zachary Fox. Till next video, see you soon.